Years ago, my father went into the hospital for a routine surgery, which they called a procedure. He had a blockage in his foot, in his leg, and the doctor told him, it's not a big deal, local anesthetic. And they were basically going to use some sort of an instrument to clear through the blockage right up the vein. And it was supposed to be something that would take an hour or so while he's up and awake and done. And he leaves the hospital the same day. Hashem had a different plan. And the operation went bad. And the doctor messed up. And when he put up that instrument up the leg to clear the blockage, he hit something he shouldn't have. And my father started to internally bleed. And his life at that moment was on the line. The doctor leaped and jumped on top of my father, literally, and grabbed something and threw it under his tongue. And he told him, Mr. Ben Susan, you better take this quick or you're going to lose your life. And my father was totally, he quickly listened and put it under his tongue and he was out in minutes. And it was there that they did a quick emergency surgery and opened up the entire leg and stopped the bleeding and cleared the blockage and cut through the blockage. But at that point, little did they know until he woke up that due to this terrible mishap, my father suffered a stroke. And until he woke up, they didn't realize, nor did he until he opened his eyes and he saw that he lost his vision. And he has a man that, that, that an hour ago was Pokech Ivrim. And then an hour later he opens his eyes and he can hardly see. And when they started making tests, and they took an MRI and they saw from the different etchings of whatever damage was done on the brain at the time of this horrific situation, that he suffered this minor stroke, which turned out to be more than just a minor stroke, his vision was terribly impaired. And I remember, we should never know. I remember that next day coming to my parents' home to visit my father after hearing that the operation went bad. After hearing that his vision was impaired, not knowing what to expect. It was frightening, I'm telling you. To walk into the room and to walk up to the man who is your biggest person in your world. He's the biggest person in your life. Your father, your rock, your strength. To see him sitting there like that in the chair, looking forward, not seeing me walk into the room because he lost his peripheral vision. Just looking, him, looking at him sitting there like that, hunched over, looking straight forward, not even realize I walked in, I was about to break down crying from that alone. And I walked up literally directly, directly in front of him. I put my face right in front of his face, right up against his nose to see me. And I started talking to him, Abba, can you see me? And I saw how broken he was. And I saw how confused he was. What's happening to me? How did this happen? I can't believe that I'm in this type of a situation. I can't see. We started to say, tell him some words of chizuk and give him some nechama. Abba Hashem's with you. Abba Hashem's going to help you. Abba Hashem's going to be more dead you. Abba, you'll see. We read up that sometimes the vision comes back. It might not be permanent damage. Let's dive in. But we saw how broken he was. And this went on for weeks, and his vision did not come back. And he was left with a very minimal vision of literally right in front of his nose, anything to the side, anything a few feet away, was already out of his scope, his reach of vision. And then the Zman started. He's a rabbi in a shul out in Lakewood, the Sephardic shul on the outside of Westgate. He's also part of the kolel of the shul. And the Zman started. And I said to myself, he must be broken, that he can't go to Yeshiva to learn, he can't see. That day, Ben Azdarim, I called up my mother and I said, Ma, let me talk to Abba to give him a little boost. I'm sure he's bothering him that he couldn't go to Yeshiva. She says, couldn't go to Yeshiva? Your father? Your father's a stubborn man. You don't know what I went through with him this morning. I said, Ma, what, what happened? What happened? Your father got up. And after he finished davening, I see him feeling around the walls of the house, making his way to the front closet, pulling out his jacket, putting on his hat, and making his way to the front door, wishing me goodbye, he's on his way to yeshiva. I said to him, are you out of your mind? You can't see two inches in front of you. How are you going to be able to see the Gemara? You're not going to be able to read a word. How are you going to be able to make it to yeshiva? You can't even find the front door of the house. But he was feeling his way around, and he found the front door, and he started to chisel and started to pull on the door and try to figure out the locks without seeing much and make his way out to the front stoop. 
He says, I ran outside, I grabbed him, I pulled him into the car. I realized I'm not getting anywhere with him. You want to go? Go! And I drove him to yeshiva. And I had the guys in the kolel come out and pull him out from the car and walk him step by step into the yeshiva and sat him down in his spot in the kolel. I said, you're joking me, right? He says, no, I'm not joking you. You want to talk to your father? Here, she hands my father the phone. I said, Abba, what in the world did you do this morning? You're supposed to be resting, you're supposed to be relaxing, you're supposed to be uh, remedying, you're supposed to be, you know, you know, curing yourself and giving yourself a break. Why are you pushing yourself? And my father says, why am I pushing myself? Do you think for one minute, when the door to my Torah was closed on me, that I was going to take this sitting down? Do you think I'm going to throw in the towel? Do you think that I'm going to let this go? Little, I went to Kolel this morning and I sat down in my place and I opened up that Gemara Baba Kama and I looked at that page and I didn't see a thing. I didn't see a thing. And I said, Abba, I am sitting here in front of my Gemara and I am not going to move from this seat until you let me see the page. Abba, please, give me the Tzurat Hadaf. Let me just see the lines. Let me just see the form. Let me just see the form, the Tzura, the Daf. Let me see the page. I'm not moving from here until you give me the page. And he says, I sat there and I looked down and you're not going to believe this. I saw the Tzurat Hadaf. I saw the page. I was able to see the layout. I was able to see the island of the Gemara in the middle. I was able to see the surrounding islands of Rashi up against the seam and Tosafot on the outer side of the left side of the page. I saw a tsura. I saw a daf. So I said, Abba, thank you. Thank you. You gave me the ability to see the tsura Hadaf. Abba! Could you give me the first word of the Mishnah? Can I just see that first word? Abba, the first word of the Mishnah, you know, in the Mishnayot that we have, in the beginning of every Mesechet, that first word of the Mishnah is always enlarged, to be a very large word. Abba, could you at least let me see the big word? Let me see that first word of the Mishnah. He says, Dovidl, you're not going to believe this. I looked down and I saw the word Arba. I said, Abba, thank you. Abba, thank you. You gave me the first word of the Mishnah. You gave me that big word. Abba, can you give me another word? Give me another word. Give me another word. Abba, give me another word. Abba, give me another word. I want to see one more word. Give me another word. He says, you're not going to believe it. I looked down and I saw the smaller word. I saw avot. And then after I saw the word avot, I said, Abba, I'm not leaving this seat until you let me finish the line. Let me finish the line. And I saw the word Nizikim. He says, you're not going to believe it. I said, Abba, give me another word. Give me another word. I saw the shore. I saw the boar. I saw the mave. I saw the hever. And he says, I started to cry. And he says, as I started crying, I don't know how, I don't know what, but in my tears, the words of the Mishnah start coming through the prisms of those tears. And I was able to read the rest of the Mishnah. After two hours... I finished the Amud. I was turning the page. Would you believe that I almost did a blot Gemara today on the first day of the Zman? Not bad for a man who's blind. That's Gadlut. That's the Avoid of the closed door. When it slammed in your face, when it caught you by surprise, when you were pushed away, and you were challenged to see how strong are you when your commitment comes down to me, says Borei Olam. I want to know what you're made of. If you could push through this, Am Sheorev, get back up and fight for me and give me the greatest Nahat because from those people, Mashiach comes. He said to me on the phone, and you called me? And you asked me why I went to Kolel? I went to fight for my tire. No one's going to close the door on my tire. Nobody. That's 
the avodah that we're looking for today. 